Good evening. Welcome to tonight's On The Edge with me, Theo Chalmers. Once again, tonight's show is two hours long and live. So if you have any questions for our guests during the show, text them to 8778 with the word EDGE, a space, and then your name, location, and your message. And we'll try to pick up on any that really hit the mark. They're all charged at standard rate, so why not get texting? In tonight's show, I'll be talking with a guest who is extremely knowledgeable about Britain's two King Arthurs, yes, really, where the Ark of the Covenant lies hidden in Wales, whose language the Welsh are really speaking, and how it and our true history has been repressed for generations for possibly very sinister reasons. To reveal all, I'm joined by a man who has spent many years studying ancient records, scrolls and tombs, writing books, and badly upsetting the establishment. He is Alan Wilson. What a show we've got tonight. Alan, welcome. Thank you. So, you've been studying this subject, or these subjects, because there's more than one, really, but they're all sort of interlinked, for, I think you said before, the, before since 1953? I know. I, I started looking at this casually, just as an off. Someone had got a weekend of something in 1956. 56. I was joined by my colleague who... Uh, really urged me to put it on a firm footing in 76. Okay. Because he wanted to launch the search for Arthur II. He said, we can do this, let's do it. So over 30 years, seriously? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've been looking for... I, I always thought there was one King Arthur, mm. and that he lived in Camelot, yeah. uh, with his round table and so on, but mm. you're, you're telling us that's not the case. Uh, it's fairly well known that there were two. And I think it was well known, certainly in Welsh record. Uh, a Reverend Williams wrote a book in 1734, saying there were two. And uh, you've only got to look at the history. He's supposed to fight the Romans, and then he fights the Anglo Saxons, or their ilk. That would make him 250 years old. So it's fairly obvious that he's two people. Right. If the first real clue on this comes in, in the most famous of British manuscripts is the Harley in 3859. And okay. there are king lists. And list number four starts off with Maskin Wedding, who is Magnus Maximus. Now it's well known that Magnus Maximus is the only son of Crispus who's the eldest son of Constantine, the great emperor. Okay. He married twice his first wife, Kindrick, daughter of Ryden, and their eldest son was Arthur. Right, this is Arthur I. Arthur I. Arthur I, okay. So, Magnus, with Andragathius, the Romans call this Arthur, invades Gaul in 383. Right. Which is not 6th century, he is 4th century. Okay. And they successfully conquered the whole of Western Europe. And they did, in Geoffrey of Monmouth, which we try not to use, and Brutusilio, other records, they fight a great battle with the Roman Emperor at Sassi. Well, Sassi is Swassons. And okay. that battle did take place. I mean, 60, doesn't it? No, oh, it's Soissons, Sassi. <laughs> Either way, the battle was fought. Gratian loses. They chase him down to Lugdunum, Lyons, and they killed him. Right. So Arthur did fight in, against the he Romans. He fought the Romans, and he was killed by the Romans. He uh, moved on. Th well, the whole of Western Europe and most of North Africa went over to Magnus, and he became... Emperor. He, was the, he was actually the right emperor, because he was the only son of the eldest son of Constantine the Great. Okay. So he, he was the right guy. He was they were finally defeated in the Balkans, two big battles in what is now, or was Yugoslavia. They're changing it now, aren't they? Yes, Croatia a and A battle Slovenia on the Sisica and River, Sisa, and a battle at Poitovio. And Arthur had to withdraw back, and a surprise move by Theodosius, the emperor of Constantinople, Captured Magnus at Ravenna, and they. My that namesake. Was the end of that was the end of him. <laughs> Theodosius. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, he there was an Arthur one. Okay. Who then returned to the UK, and there are some solid records. Of, there's a solid record of him in the UK, an Irish prince named Ruth R E U E T H invaded North Wales. In the sort of medieval records, he's King Ryons. And in the Welsh records, he Rita Gower, but it's the same guy. He invades Snowdonia and Gwynedd. Okay. Arthur's march to the battle is recorded in an ancient Welsh poem, and there's a grave mound for old Ruth up on Snowdonia where he was put out so for the battle. It was he lost Arthur it. Arthur won Ruth and that's, Nil, wasn't and it? Yeah, and yeah, that's known to be 367 AD. Okay. So we've got an Arthur one. 
So right. that's your beginning. We knew there were two quite early on. So what was Arthur One's territory that he ruled? Uh, it would have been... Uh, well, he, they seem to have had a, a Tairn. A Tairn is a monarch, and under the Tairn were very, a number of regional kings. Certainly, they, they don't appear to have used currency too much, but it was a main... Uh, it would, you know, one captured Roman legionary in Roman, early Roman times was worth 20 cows as a slave. That's sort of thing. <laughs> But nonetheless, uh, his territory would have been the Midlands of England, okay. Warwickshire and, and across there, Shropshire, okay. maybe as far as Leicester, and North Wales, Powys. And, and, uh, not, there wasn't not a Wales South in England Wales. then, it was just Britain. Yes, but they're not South Wales, because I believe there was some connection with Glamorgan. Yeah, he had a brother who was buried in, in Lanhilleth, uh, and that's in the Songs of the Graves, very clearly outlined. You go along and there's a great big grave mound right on target. Uh, he would have been titular over most places, they'd have all said, he's the boss, you know. So uh, that's the way it would have worked. But there were kings in Wales, obviously. Right. Where's the kingdom? It's not a principality, it's a kingdom. You've got to get that in your head. Kingdom, kingdom. of Wales. Yeah. So, Arthur I, yes. um, where's he buried? Uh, the account of the grave of Arthur says that he's in the great ancient graveyard of the British where multitudes of the illustrious of the British are buried. Is this Atherstone in Warwickshire? Well, there's a place called Old Bury, you see. Uh, Old Bury. Old Bury yeah. place. Mm. Arthur's Twin. Arthur's... Arthur Stone. Arthur Stone. Yeah. Arthur Stone. Yeah. I've been there. And uh, there are multitudes of huge grave mountains in the woods there. And they've turned it into a nature reserve for bird watching now. Yes. And that is his place. You see, there are names around it. There are places... Uh, they seem to be strange Anglo-Saxon, but one reads, granted free without taxation, in perfect Welsh. Another one reads, uh, free grazing for sheep, <laughs> you see? <laughs> and so, okay. uh, these names, and then there's another Ali, you know, uh, Plowland of the court, Ali, you see? Okay. And so, ah, so, so by following the ancient records, you found that there were two King Arthurs, you found the grave track them down. of Arthur I. We think so, yes. Okay, um, and he was... He died around 400, we think. 400, this is uh, AD. AD, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And but then there was a later mm. Arthur. Yes, Arthur II. Well, Arthur I has a son, Tatal, Theodore, right? Yes. He has a son, <laughs> Titan, Theodorus, yes. right? Theodorus, right? <laughs> he has a son, Tithfalt, who is Theodosius, who yes. became king. Big right. king. He defeated the Saxons after a terrible massacre. Right. His son was Tudrig, Theodoric who's buried at Mathen, has been twice excavated, the, the wound in his skull. His son is Moerig, which is Morris, Yes. and we know where he is, and his son is Arthur II. So six generations down the male line, we've got Arthur II. Right. And... Okay, yeah, and, and, and uh, what was the kingdom of Arthur II? Was that the same kingdom, he, North Wales? Uh, well, it, I think uh, you probably got a copy, but uh, he was pronounced and proclaimed king of Glamorgan. Glamorgan, yes. Um, he's over in Brittany. His knights are there with him, and, and it's in the Brutes of England, which are the official histories, medieval histories, of England. And they say that he's crown king of Lamorgan. So it? everybody in England knew where he was. So we why are. is it, then, that we have all this sort of weird King Arthur industry, and there's people get saying, oh, he's in yeah. Glastonbury, uh, and somewhere, you know, in uh, um, Cornwall, and... Yeah, yeah. And they've mixed them all together. If it's, if it's so uh, in the records... Why has no one else found them? Well, religious and political, you know, manoeuvring uh, for various, you know, reasons. If, uh, if you look at the name Glastonbury, Glastons in Breton and Cornish means a place of oak trees. Glastenai in Welsh is a scarlet oak. And there is a mention around uh, 800, I think, 70, 70 uh, give me a few years, in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle of a, a Glastons, a Glastonic, mm. and it's very clear that's in the Midlands. Now, it's 200 miles from the oak trees there you're referring to.